let's just start in verse 1. You all want to do that? I got plenty of time. I got 30 minutes and I'm sitting down. I can preach for hours sitting down. I am the true vine, and my Father is the husband. Every branch of me that beareth forth not fruit, he taketh away. And every branch that beareth forth fruit, he purges it, that it may bring forth more fruit. Uh, okay, so either you're either you're with God or you're not God. And if you're with God, you're, you're going to get your you're going to get some bad stuff cut out of you. So quit whining about it and, and enjoy it because He's doing it to bring forth more fruit and to make your life better. Yeah. And if you keep kicking against it, you're just going to be miserable. Y'all with me? Now you are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. Abide in me, and I in you. As a branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abide in the vine. No more can you, except you abide in me. So I don't have to do nothing but stay connected to Jesus. If I stay connected up to Jesus and let him work on me, I stay in a good place. Sounds pretty good, right? That was a great revelation to me many years ago. I just have to stay connected. He's already done all the work. Pretty free thing, right? Just remember that as we move along. Big smile. We're going to come to something. I am the vine, you are the branches. He that abides in me and I in him the same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me you can do nothing. So if he doesn't put the super to your natural, you're probably not going to bring forth a lot of fruit. Got it? But if he puts the super to your natural, you're going to start bringing forth some fruit. If you don't have fruit in your life, then you need to start asking yourself why. If you're miserable all the time, you need to start asking yourself why. God didn't fail. You know, one of the most freeing things I figured out in my life was that God can't fail and I'm the weakest link, so I just need God to help fix me. As I've done that, I've grown and started bringing forward much fruit. And when I start not seeing a lot of fruit, and one of the key fruits you need to see in your life is joy. But how many know when you lose joy, you start blaming everybody else for why you don't have it? How many know God wants to make, make you a walking billboard of the goodness of God? So, he says, And a man abide not in me, he is cast forth as a branch, and is withered, and the men gather them and cast them into the fire, and they are burned. So if you decide that you're just going to play lukewarm for a long time, you're going to get cut off and cast into the fire. Does anybody want to get burned? No. This is red letters, and he's talking to church folk here that were once with him that did, they refused to stay with him. Y'all with me? It ain't a game. Although most people play it like one. Someone said, you've been preaching awful strong here lately, preacher. Are you awake yet? Listen, I want to see you so full of the joy of God, walking around having a great time. Survivors do not make heaven. Overcomers do. That's what the Word of God says. Satan has lulled people in. Well, if you'll just survive, you'll be all right. He said, overcomers are for heaven. Right? He said, I made you more than a conqueror through Christ Jesus. See, I can speak the word in here and it'll fire you up. Your spirit starts bearing witness of my spirit. You start thinking, I can swing over here on the corner, on the corner stalk and spit in the devil's eye. Then you walk back out there and go, uh. Come on. Y'all here? If you abide in me, so you have a choice if you stay connected in God. Do you understand that? He didn't notice the big if there. If you abide in me and my word shall abide in you. So we have to put the word in daily, right? He says he'll keep it in your mind in perfect peace whoever stays on you. You so show me somebody having trouble, I'll show you somebody not in the world. They quit reading their Bible, or when they do read it, they don't really... Now listen, I understand not everybody gets it. Now, it took me years. But there's still something that physically happens in your spirit when you just daily eat the Word. How many can agree to that? You, just, you, you notice something. So, and it shall be done unto you. Here is my Father glorified 
that ye bear much fruit, so you shall be my disciples. How do you know if you're his disciples? You're bearing much fruit. Signs and wonders are following you around. If you don't have signs and wonders in your life, then are you really a disciple? It ain't just for preachers. Come on, I'm about to get to a key, though, that's going to help a lot of you. I'm setting you up, I know. But I'm also trying to wake you. Listen, aren't you tired of reading about it? Aren't you ready to experience it? Don't you want to be like, like, like Peter? Silver and gold have I none, but what I have I give unto you. You know, I've had the pleasure of doing that and watching people's lives transform. There's nothing better than that. You know, the church wasn't made to pay people's light bills. They were made to teach people faith so they can pay their own light bills and pay other people's light bills. I'm not saying we won't help if you get in a need because if we take care of the poor and the widows. But you know, most people don't really fit in that case. That's the part where America struggles. I can take you to countries where people are poor. I've seen kids on the streets with no one place else to go, eating scraps off the side of it, and everybody just walked by them like it was nothing. I did not, but I saw lots of other people. People like, well, what are you doing, Pastor? Well, I'm going to go feed them kids. Well, they'll just strong run away. Well, I don't care, they're kids. And took care of for quite some time after that's in between there and the world. But do you see what I'm saying this morning? So what is the difference? Well, let's get to it. As the Father have loved me, so have I have loved you. Continue ye in my love. If you're not living that kind of Jesus love, then we're not really loving like He loved. You know, back in the 80s and 90s, they had these silly bracelets. What would Jesus do? And everybody went around asking that. And they only said it when it lined up with their motives. Right. You know, what would Jesus do every hour of the day, every moment of the day was a great analogy. But I'm about to get to the key to that. Just hold on. Something that I believe has caused us to be tripped up on. Are y'all, y'all ready? We're about to get there. So how many know it's not a question if Jesus loves you. I want you to know this morning that Jesus loves you and there's absolutely nothing you can do about it. He's going to love you regardless. And that is a phenomenal thing. He has loved me at my worst. But that's helped me love some of the worst. You see what I'm saying? The question is, is do you love God? If you love Him, are you loving others like Him? Still hold on to that. You can still answer all these questions right and still have a hang-up that's been tripping you up and we're about to get there. Y'all ready? Y'all, have I piqued your interest yet? These things I've spoken unto you that my joy might remain in you and that your joy might get you by. Is that what it says? No. Full of joy. Full of joy. Ha, ha, ha. Woo! Ah! He's always happy. Well, not always, but I try to stay that way. I recognize when my joy meter gets low. That's what Romans 15, 13 is for. He said when you recognize your joy meter is low, you come to Him and He'll fill you with all joy and peace through the power of the Holy Ghost. It's happy. Why, why are you happy? Because Jesus saved me. Amen. Amen. He loves me. Come on. That means I can love you. Even though you don't deserve it. Let's be honest. Some of you. Come on. Why are you judging people the way you didn't want people to judge you? Big smile. Y'all still here? 
So he wants your joy to be full. Does Jesus want a bunch of people looking like they're walking around sucking on persimmons? You know, he said signs and wonders will follow you, but I believe one of the greatest signs and wonders we can have as believers is being full of joy. Ha, 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 ha. Woo! Glory, it's going to be all right. Jesus is on my side. I got Jesus on the main line. I want to tell him what I want. Woo! I want you to be saved, set free, and delivered. Glory! <laughs> But if my love walk gets jacked up, I ain't no good to nobody. Because he judges the what? Intentions of my heart. And I, he's not stopping my joy. I'm letting something get in that's blocking my joy from being full. Because he wants my joy to be full. He made a way for my joy to be full. That's his utmost desire is for me to walk around full of joy. I posted something the other day. The Holy Ghost spoke to me. said, I posted it so I could remember it. That was about the reason why I post stuff sometimes anymore. So I can go back and catalog it. He said, if you need something to alter your mood, you, and that's a sign you don't have enough of the Holy Ghost in you. Whether it's drugs, Prozac, alcohol, marijuana, whatever it is, if you need something to alter your mood, that's a direct sign you don't have enough of the Holy Ghost in you. I'm just tell you what he said. Don't shoot the messenger. So, this is my option I've given to all of the church. I'm just asking you to consider this request. Is that what it says? When, I, when he commands you, which he does on several things, how many know when he commanded you to go on the highways and byways, it wasn't a request? How I many know he's not asking you when to, to love people when you feel like it? Right? So then let's look at another scripture there while we've got that kind of thought going on that's going to play. I'll tell you, this is going to change your life when you get a hold of this today when I get to the point. 2 Timothy chapter 3. 2 Timothy chapter 3. 2 Timothy chapter 3. Oh, sorry. Chapter 2, verse 3. 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 3. I apologize. 2 Timothy 2, verse 3. Thou therefore endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. You know, people that's been serving God, really love for God for a while, they know what it's like to have to endure some things, trials, tribulations, you know. But it didn't say, endure, it didn't say thou therefore become hardness. It didn't say, Thou therefore become hardness. I'm going to say it again. It didn't say, Thou therefore become hardness. It said, Endure hardness. That means resist it so you don't become it. And the only way you can resist hardness is staying full of joy. But so many times we've just doubled down, double gritted, tried to force our way through it our own strength. I'm a good soldier. <laughs> Bless God. You don't know what I've endured. <laughs> oh, but your face does. <laughs> Come on, I'm preaching this morning. You know, he said, so. We're going to endure some things, you know. And he said, no man that war has entangled themselves in the affairs of this life. If you start trying to fight uh, the things of this life in the flesh, you're going to lose. You've got to stay in the spirit realm. That he may please him who has chosen to be a soldier. For man also strive for master yet he's not crowned except he strive lawfully. So we have to do line up with the word of God. We're going to have hard times. But if you lose your joy, if you lose your love walk, it's all for nothing. 
Right? Y'all with me? All right, let's continue on. We're about to get to the good stuff. I got 15 minutes left. <laughs> this is my commandment that you love one another. And that word love there, in case you don't know, I did a great study years ago on agape, filio, and all the different kinds of love. There's actually more than you could actually think of. But agape means unconditional. You can break that down however deep you want to go. But unconditional still means, guess what? Unconditional. There's no conditions placed upon it. So, he said, my commandment is, that is love one another as I have loved you. He's like, I'm not asking, he's a great leader. I'm not asking you to do nothing I haven't done. You just love them the same way that I loved you. So are you going to be the person with the talents that goes and demands all your debts from everybody that owes you? Or are you just going to let them go the way Jesus did? Come on. So, then he said this, Greater love hath no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. No greater love than, than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. And he says, and you are my friends. Do you know when you're in the military, I mean, everybody fights for their country, but they don't die for their country. They die for their friend right next to them. In the body of Christ, we should be close enough that we're willing to die for the one next to us that we have that much love for. Him. Come on, are you hearing me this morning? So, you are my friends if you do whatsoever I command you. Wait a minute, I thought he loved me no matter what. He does. But if you want to be his friends, you've got to do what he commands you to do. Now, I want to stop. Well, no, I'm going to read on and then we'll come back to this. Henceforth, I call you not servants, for the servant knoweth what his Lord doeth, but I have called you friends for all things that I have heard of my Father, and I have made known unto you. You have not chosen me, but I have chosen you and ordained you that you should go and bring forth fruit that your fruit should remain, and that whatsoever you ask of the Father in my name, he may give it unto you. These things I command you, that you love one another. If the world hates you, you know that it hated me before it hated you. If you were of the world, the world would love his own. But because you are not of the world, but I have chosen you out of the world, therefore the world hateth you. So don't be shocked that the world hates you. It hated Jesus. When you're, at, when you're flowing in him, he's going to hate you. Right? And he chose us, right? And he, but he expects fruit. Do you know what fruit is? Fruit is souls in these pews. Is this church being overflown with people being saved in a move of God? That is fruit. Flowing out of each one of our lives. Amen? But now, today's point. You notice he stopped calling you a servant and started calling you a friend. I mean, well, Jesus is our master. He's our Lord. We gave him our life, right? But most people serve him still like a servant. A servant does it because it's what their master told them to do. A friend does it because they love him. A servant does it because it's what's required of them. A friend does it because they love their friend. The Lord spoke to me and said, I have a whole lot of servants today. I have very few friends. I kindly suggest today that maybe you change your relationship from being a servant and doing what you have to do to being a friend and doing it because you love Jesus. 